um, which is Peter Lanke. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I've been living in the Netherlands for two years and I still can't speak Dutch. Um, so <laughs> I, so Peter, um, he left a very short bio. It just said OSS infrastructure engineer with a habit of doing the DevOps. But I know that Peter also does nightly stand-up paddling because he asked me to join him and I was like, dude, no, it's cold. <laughs> Maybe when it's warm, like today. Not in this suit. Uh, this is very warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter, are you ready to uh, tell your stories? Uh, I think I am. Let right. me share my screen and we'll get right on it. Okay. You can see your is this screen. Yes, there is. Visible for everybody? Yes. Your zoom controls are kind of a bit in the way. If you can move them. Yeah, I the... think this should be better. Yeah, it's definitely better. Cool. Great. So um, yeah, you'll be talking about the community building around failure stories. So that's really yeah, exciting because we know each other from community meetings, and sure. uh, yeah. So take it away, Peter. All right. Uh, so thank you so much for having me here. Uh, this community building is uh, absolutely essential in, I think, uh, software development and uh, Software Circus and all of the other meetups that uh, are organized are uh, yeah, doing a wonderful job at this. Um, but there's something uh, missing here, I think. Because uh, I attend a lot of uh, meetups. Hold on, let me also set a clock because... Yeah, so I, I attend a lot of meetups, especially back when I was uh, working in uh, Amsterdam. And um, a few years ago, there was no Kubernetes uh, meetup yet. And I would go to the DevOps Amsterdam, Docker user group, Software Circus, all of them. Uh, I would frequent at least once a week. Um, and there's always these very nice stories on how uh, yeah, you moved your platform onto wonderful new technology X. and after that, everyone lived happily after, after, uh, ever after. And yeah, something was missing here. Um, these meetups are always, this looks sort of like this. Uh, there's a big room, a lot of people, and we all stare at someone uh, telling a story. And what started happening is that a lot of, or a group of people started attending the meetups, but we would actually mostly go for the after parties or something just to compare notes and experiences. And after that happened a couple of times, um, your colleague uh, Adam actually suggested, hey, why don't we actually make this a meetup, this thing, where we well actually talk to each other uh, in a group and uh, so that's what he did. Uh, he started the uh, Kubernetes support group. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the second meeting. And what we basically did is uh, we gather a group of uh, max 15 people because it's sort of hard to structure conversation and not have things go all over the place all the time. So max 15 people, and we would have an introduction, like nothing leaves this room. You can speak sort of freely here. Don't break any NDAs or something, but feel free to talk about yeah whatever you uh, experienced. And it turned out that a lot of us experienced uh, yeah, failure with this new technology, a lot. But there is a, another problem with this setup as well. Um, yeah, it doesn't really scale, and we're all about scaling, right? Um, the, the limit of 15 people per event, well, sometimes it was 20 or something, uh, that was a bit hard, and it took, takes quite a bit of maintenance, and you don't disseminate the actual learnings uh, into the broader community. Um, so a few years ago, uh, Henning Jacobs uh, started uh, Kubernetes Failure Stories, a collection of, uh, yeah, post-mortems uh, that people uh, were able to share. Uh, I think this is actually a wonderful method for uh, yeah, uh, sharing this kinds of um, 
information uh, and experience. Yeah, uh, the, the meetup group uh, is a bit more interactive, of course. So we didn't do presentations. We actually talked to each other and that, that makes it a lot more high uh, bandwidth conversation. But, uh, it, overall, I, I still think that tell your stories uh, are a very nice format for yeah, uh, explaining what things are actually not that great yet. So um, this talk is sort of a combination of a failure story and a uh, Kubernetes support group uh, meetup. Uh, Kubernetes support group members, uh, I miss you all very much. Um, you know who you are. And we would start off our meetings with uh, all of us introducing each, uh, ourselves. So, hi, I'm Peter. Uh, I do IT infrastructure and software delivery and monitoring and ops these things, sort of all over the place. I work at a company called Fullstack as a consultant. Uh, I have a GitHub page. I unfortunately also have a Twitter handle where you can see me in the suit as well. Uh, and for the last couple of years, I've been doing a lot of cloud native stuff. So, the real meat of the story. Uh, this is one of the failure stories I sort of structured into a slide deck. And it's about uh, authentication system within uh, Kubernetes. So basically, um, in a lot of settings, you don't experience screen field uh, deployments. Um, so there's already some kind of central user database like uh, LDAP, AD, um, sort of same or uh, GitHub or whatever external system you have for users. And you can expose that through a, a software product called DEX, uh, originally founded by uh, CoreOS. And this is basically a translation proxy for uh, exposing those uh, legacy uh, services as uh, OpenID Connect. And in order to provide that service, uh, it needs to store a little bit of state. Well, a little bit is what I thought. Uh, and it has different storage backends uh, in order to do this. So this is default configuration. This comes from the Helm chart and is in all of the examples. And this makes it very easy to get started with DEX because basically they store uh, your session data in uh, custom resources in Kubernetes. Uh, and that makes things very easy because you can sort of abuse the Kubernetes API as a uh, rough database because you can store arbitrary data in there if you define the uh, custom resource definitions. So I was storing my uh, stuff in Kubernetes, but this has a little bit of a problem. A lot of software comes with uh, terrible uh, defaults. That is uh, not strong enough, maybe. Uh, Ian Coldwater will probably talk a lot more about this. Um, and this is often described as, uh, or at the last DevOps Amsterdam, um, someone wrote a very nice talk on this and uh, he described it as stop hitting yourself. It's defaults. You should have known that you should have changed them, right? Yeah. So what happened is that some of these custom resources, uh, or resources had this uh, insanely long uh, time to live. And there was not really a way to change it. Even if, if there was, I would have overlooked it. Um, so these resources kept getting created by uh, a bunch of refreshing dashboards. So this is a bunch of JavaScript. So that doesn't follow the proper redirects uh, sometimes. And as long as this JavaScript uh, keeps hitting your HTTP uh, endpoints, uh, DAX will continue uh, making uh, lots and lots of uh, custom resources inside of the text namespace. And all of these, these things together combined into something that triggered an actual security bug. And I will talk a little bit about this. So let's follow this bug down the rabbit hole. Um, so this doesn't break um, immediately as some of these things uh, so, uh, do. This was an on-premise uh, situation. So uh, I was sharing uh, storage backend uh, um, in VMware with other systems. And sometimes the API server would 
get a little bit slow and I would sort of accept it like one and a half second is bad, but it's not, I can survive this, right? No, no. But this started happening a lot more. And also over the course of two weeks, I had to keep in increasing memory on decks and I was not suspect suspecting uh, too much of it. I just kept increasing the resource li uh, limits and go. I don't have time for this to really look into it. Well, that's on me. Um, at some point, uh, increasing the memory did not bring back uh, DEX anymore. So here I am uh, debugging what could be going on. And I have figured out pretty quickly that uh, I couldn't list any of the out request uh, resources in the namespace anymore. Um, kubectl would just time out. And then I found this um, uh, Git, uh, GitHub issue. So what actually happened is that I have a ton of out requests in my cluster and I don't really know what to do about them because even kubectl getting them times out, deleting minus all flags doesn't work. I'm sort of uh, yeah, figuring out how do, how do I deal with this? Uh, yeah, so listing it times out and you need to do that to delete the resources. So, okay, start thinking about some some uh, ways to fix this. And of course, yeah, let's exacerbate the problem even more by maybe tweaking the timeouts a little bit or hell, just delete the entire namespace and let Kubernetes clean it up for us. Or just go directly to the database and delete the resources there, right? And yeah, this talk is inspired to, or should be inspiring to give other solutions. So I'm very um, curious what you would do here. Tell me after the talk, please. Um, but basically it was sort of a guessing game and I didn't really feel comfortable uh, doing any of them, but I had to do something, right? So I basically just deleted the Kubernetes namespace and yeah, that's the talk. It, it was fixed. Not really. Wow. Um, yeah. So everyone familiar with uh, Kubernetes uh, knows that this thing um, consists of a lot of controllers that uh, keep uh, uh, looping uh, and reconciling state. So reconciliation loop uh, within Kubernetes after deleting uh, the namespace was trying to do a cleanup of the entire namespace by cleaning up the database for us at CD. And what was happening is the controller was hitting the API, listing all out authentication requests, it was timing out, and it did that in a loop. So my control planes uh, did not like that at all. And suddenly, uh, yeah, trouble, because now not my, only my single sign-on is down, but the entire cluster control plane is down. Not fun. So your control plane is down. Uh, couldn't really access monitoring because I uh, the authentication was down. And uh, also I couldn't use uh, bypass through the cube API with a port forward because the cube API was down. Uh, I did notice that most things seem to be working except for the control plane because uh, Prometheus was still uh, alerting on just control plane. Yeah. So fixing this. This was basically the state that the namespace was stuck in. Uh, if, if you could briefly uh, get the API to respond uh, in between restarts. And what was basically triggering the entire failure is the definalizer, which is uh, cleaning up the, uh, the namespace and the, the, the database. And basically my control plane was down for a couple of hours already. And I really just wanted the namespace to be gone and for the reconciliation loop to just stop. Uh, but you cannot remove that finalizer in kubectl, it won't allow you. Um, it's probably some Golang uh, or a Go dependency thing that won't allow you to do that. But you can go directly through the API uh, with a, just a raw HTTP request. And someone actually wrapped this in a shell script and you can just push the new uh, object without the finalizer. You should never do this because 
this finalizer exists for a reason, right? Um, it, it won't clean up your database if you if you do this. Um, so yeah, never do this <laughs> if you if you have other options. Uh, but I, I was getting sort of desperate. Um, it did fix it. Um, on the storage layer, I could still see that etcd was pretty full. Didn't really feel comfortable about you know ever recreating a namespace dex again because uh, <laughs> yikes. And um, yeah, basically uh, to remediate this because I, I did need to have dex back again. Uh, now I uh, deployed it with uh, same defaults uh, because uh, if you go through the git commit log, uh, you probably need to blow up the screen in order to see this, but you can see uh, that that there's this commit where instead of a hard coded value of uh, time to live of 24 hours, now you can finally configure it in the uh, in the settings. Yeah. So uh, to live is to suffer and to survive is some meaning uh, is to find some meaning in the suffering. Yeah, that's um, pretty depressing. Uh, I like uh, Charity Mayor's uh, motto a lot more to. Um, make a nice story out of this. And I invite everyone to do this uh, as well. It's not as scary as it looks. Uh, you don't have to wear a suit. Uh, please come share your failures at a meetup. Oh yeah, and uh, no actual business applications were harmed during this outage. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Peter. I'm sorry, I was a little bit distracted by the uh, unicorn because it has such big eyes. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry. Whoa. That's the alarm. Great timing. Oh, great. Okay. So do you need to get the door or something? No, no, that was my, uh, my, my clock. <laughs> okay. Good, good going. Uh -oh. um, so I'm just checking for questions right now. Adam says hello. And... Um, <laughs> He loves the merry-go-round analogy, so well done. Thanks, thanks. Um, <laughs> so um, is there anything that you haven't mentioned in your talk, any uh, FAQs or something like that that you would like to clear up at this time when I'm looking if anyone's asked any questions? So it's really more about having a conversation with everyone. Uh, so if you have questions, just hit me up on the Brella. I will uh, start up the, the client again and just talk. Uh, that's that's really the point I wanted to make. Meet people and uh, share your own uh, experiences. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to run this too long because the, the panel is yeah. starting over and you want to see it too. So <laughs> Exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> not not so in much. the suit though. Thank you for coming. Right. Um, Thank you so much for having me.